What are people saying about the atmosphere over there right now? Well, it, uh, the word that I heard yesterday around that facility was awkward. You had Rob Palenka, who's, who's the general manager of the team, in exit meetings with Luke Walton. And Luke Walton knew very well that Magic Johnson and Rob Palenka were planning to fire him yesterday. And, and that all changed. Luke Walton went from not even being scheduled to be a part of the exit conversations with the players to sitting in there with his general manager and still trying to figure out what's his future with the organization. Yeah, there were reports that the Lakers were shocked by the move. Do you have any sense, and as you mentioned, Luke Walton, once they've regained their footing, if they've put together any kind of plan to move forward and what that looks like? Uh, they're still trying to formulate that, Laura, that, you know, Luke Walton has next year on his contract and then a team option uh, for 2021. And they've got to decide in an org as an organization how they're going to go forward. You know, who's going to really be making the basketball decisions. Is it going to be Rob Palenka, the general manager? Are they going to go out of the marketplace and look to hire, you know, a sitting general manager somewhere else in the league or somebody else uh, who's not working, who's available? Uh, those are the uh, questions facing Jeannie Buss here. And Luke Walton's future is going to be dependent a lot on what kind of management decision they make with L.A. I was shocked like everyone else, but honestly, I came away feeling like happy for magic. Like, get out of there. You don't want to be there, don't be there. And he actually, in my opinion, he set the Lakers up in a decent position. He left them better than he found them. So while what he did yesterday was unprofessional, you should talk to your boss first before you leave. I don't think it really changes anything. It just makes us look at him and say, maybe you should have gave her a call before you did this. But if you don't want to be there, get out. And now they have LeBron James locked up for three years with a player option, and they have a bunch of expiring contracts, so they have room to get somebody else. So I feel like that's a better position than they were in before Magic took the And this was unique for the Lakers brand, which is a storied one. LeBron James, who's an iconic, powerful right. individual on and off the floor. However... There's one person that he's not more powerful than. That's Magic Johnson. Yeah. Right. And that card got pulled. And the vet move that Magic actually did was he made sure he tweeted, thank you, Jeannie. Yep. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Luke. Thank you, players. So now any changes that get made ain't on me. Yeah. Yeah, I'm surprised. It wasn't that my call. He's is that, do you, himself do you out. read anything into the fact that LeBron didn't get a personal shout out there too? Because if anybody deserves a He's personal a player, shout out. He's a player though. I know. That's not a personal shout out. Like okay. he also said all the people who work for the organization, which Rob Palenka falls under that and Jeannie falls under that also. But LeBron didn't yeah. get a personal shout out. It was, I mean, I found that interesting particularly because LeBron has uh, made it commonplace to do one year with the player option, one year with the player option. And because of how the Cavaliers kind of did him dirty in, that first, in the first contract when he, when he signed long-term deals, I wonder how he feels now. He finally gave someone a real commitment, and a year later, <laughs> the organization is turned upside down. And how about this if you're Magic? LeBron James does not go to L.A. if, LeBron, if Magic yeah. isn't pitching him and recruiting him. Right. Mm. So now, to your point, you get Eight him to switch. sign a three-year deal, and they don't make the playoffs, and Magic just walks away. LeBron still got to play there for two more Hit years. Hit him with that bait and switch. <laughs> there we go. Hit him with that bait and switch. So it's interesting because everyone keeps talking about they're picking up the pieces. We understand that. This is probably going to take a little bit of time for the Lakers to figure out exactly what they want to do here. But what do you think they're going to do? Not what should they do, but what do you think Jeannie Buss actually does here with Luke Walton, with Rob Polinka? I think with all things equal, Luke Walton returns as the head coach. Wow. For a couple of reasons. One, he didn't do a bad job. If you look at the stats that the Lakers were poor in, three-point shooting, free throw shooting, and turnovers, those are all roster issues, not necessarily performance issues. And when you have a bunch of veterans on one-year deals and you have a bunch of young players on rookie deals, there's no level of investment because none of those guys except LeBron realize they're coming back next year. I think, I mean, you're absolutely right. That's a good point. I think you could argue that turnovers could be on the coach, but I think by and large, it's hard to say that Luke Walton was the problem. And if Jeannie likes him, it seemed like Magic was implying that part of the, his issue with Jeannie was a disagreement over Luke Walton. But I think what they should do is, and what LeBron should do 
is he should take over. Like, they need to hand the keys over. Everyone's going to assume anyway that he has his finger in all these decisions. Like, he really should, for the first time, step into this but, into this vacuum and fill it the way that he wants to because he's the only one who's, whose legacy is going to be yeah. improved or harmed by this. No one else cares about it. I see anyone. what you're saying. The one thing about LeBron, though, if you notice in the past, he never puts himself fully on something. I think this something is the time when he should. I get it, but he doesn't want to be responsible either. You know? Absolutely. He is whether he if wants to be or not. If it doesn't work out. How, how, how about these degrees of separation? The leadership in Miami starts with Pat Riley, who coached Magic Johnson during the Showtime era. You know that they're friends and they're confidants. <laughs> mm -hmm. The level of autonomy that LeBron James has in Cleveland to make the power moves you guys talk about, that's not happening in Miami, and it will not happen in L.A. Hence, Magic Johnson walking away without consulting LeBron. How about them picking a coach? Now, LeBron's going to be going into his 17th season. So are we talking rebuild mm. or are we talking about reload? Now, who is that going to be with? Because I don't think any of the top-level free agents are going to go to L.A. So why fire the coach, pay him $5 million not to coach, and then bring somebody else in and pay them $5 million to coach and invest $10 million in the coaching spot?